And uh, don't know how good I'm going to do, but we're going to let God have it. And hopefully speak to your heart. And you let Him talk to you. Open your heart to receive the Word of God. Most important thing in this world is the Word of God. Let Him speak to your heart. There'll be a day come that people won't have a Bible. They will take it. I promise you, they will take it. That day is coming. Why we got it today? Romans chapter number 1. Find your place. Can and are able. Would you stand with us and we'll reverence the reading of the Word of God together. Romans 1, you found your place? Say amen. 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 Still looking? Say hold on. Verse 13. Now would not have you ignorant brethren that oft times I've purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto. That means he was led by the Holy Ghost in a different direction. That I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor to both Greeks and barbarians, both wise and unwise. So as much as is, as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Say that with me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. Heavenly Father thank you O God for visiting with us this morning. Thank you O God for caring for us all the days of our life. But it's special times when you show up in the house. And we just want to give you full recognition, Lord. Without you, we'd all be lost. But because of you, we can see beyond tomorrow and understand our eternity rests in you. Incline your ear, Lord, and hear your cries of your servant. Give us that that we need for this hour. Let us be a help to your people. Let their hearts be ready to receive the gospel. Father, let us say you've done it all yet again. Thank you for the miracles you provide us on a daily basis and for the love that you've given us. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now let me go ahead and and cancel it. A dispelled rumor. God does not love everybody. I'm sorry. Jesus said in John chapter 17, those whom I love. God's angry with the wicked every day. But those who believe are those who are counted among those that are loved. We see the Apostle Paul here. He's headed to Rome. The Word of God has got there before him. The testimony of God has got there before him. We don't know if it was when Peter talked to the Italian band in Acts chapter 13. We don't know if it's a synagogue in Rome that Christians have infiltrated and brought Christ to them. But Paul's done got word that it's there. And he said, I'm ready to come and I'm ready to preach. He's saying, don't be discouraged. Many times I wanted to come. Determined I was going to come. But God turned me another way. Interference that God gives us from time to time is no doubt divine. Although we can't understand it always and our lives get interrupted, although we can't fathom it out, there is a reason God turns us one way to another. 
He said, I'm obligated to both Greek and barbarian. I'm obligated to the wise and the unwise. I'm ready to preach the gospel. Hmm. Ready to preach the good tidings. And I am not ashamed. Now Paul's headed to Rome, pagan capital of the world. It's not like going to church with your brothers and your sisters. He's carrying the light to a dark place. He's carrying hope to heathens. He's bringing salvation to the sinful, wonders to the wicked. It's a culture that is self-proclaimed sophistication. They believed that they were the cutting edge of society. There was no city like Rome. Their ways and their theology, their reasoning. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I will not be ashamed. I will have no feeling of inferiority. I will have no feeling of inadequacy. I will not be embarrassed and I will not be reluctant due to fear of humiliation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Where can he get such fortitude? We understand that Paul was a student of Gamaliel who was a great teacher in the Pharisaical ways. He knew the Hebrew Bible in and out. He knew everything there was to know. Maybe, maybe Paul's strength came from, his resolve came from reading Daniel chapter number 3, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer in this matter. If it be so, our God will deliver us. He's able to deliver us out of thine hands, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee. Mm. O king, we will not serve your gods nor set up the images that you have prayed. That's called resolution. That's called commitment. Paul's carrying that same commitment to Rome. Understand something. Why people are ashamed is because they lack commitment. Amen? I'm sorry you're so quiet, but that's good you're listening. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. And, oh man, the good news. You get back in Isaiah 53, Isaiah starts talking about Christ. He talks talks about Him, if you've ever noticed and ever read it, in two different tenses. He talks as a past tense, and he talks as a present tense. He says uh, uh, that it was, uh, when Isaiah is speaking of the characterizations of Christ, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Huh? What was that? With his stripes are. Not that we was healed. Not have we been healed. We are. He said it pleased God to bruise him. He put on him Put him to an open grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Jesus came to this world to bring salvation. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. 
reason some people are ashamed of the gospel is because they don't see themselves as sinful people. There is today a, a fashion going around in churches. Be the best you you can be. They don't talk about sin. Nobody talks about ye must be born again. The second birth has been moved away from mainstream churches. Uh, they don't tell you uh, uh, that you're not perfect anymore. They don't want to be reminded that we're not perfect. There's a same group like that today was here in Romans chapter number 1. The Bible said because they knew God and they worshipped Him not as God. Oh my! They didn't even retain God in their knowledge. And for this cause... God turned them over to a reprobate mind. Now, you don't want to think that you don't need God. Let me help you with something. If you get that mindset, you're fixing to walk the path of Saul. I just got to come down here. I can't help this. Saul had it all. Head and shoulders above everybody. But when he's supposed to go and kill the Amorites, and Samuel comes out and says, What's this blee and I hear in the courtroom, courtyard? He says, Well, there's some good sheep there, there's some good sacrifices there, and that won't kill the servants there, and, they, oh, and, and the king, he'll be good somewhere down the road. We can use him too. And the Bible said to Saul, Samuel said to Saul in the Bible, because you've rejected God. God has rejected you. Hebrews chapter number 1. God turns these people over to reprobate. That word reprobate means unapproved. That word reprobate means rejected. Amen. I don't want somebody to come up and tell me, God loves the gay people. No, He don't. No, He don't. God loves the transgender people. Which one? We're in a day and an hour where we make the gospel fit us instead of us fitting the gospel. You have to understand, without God, we have no hope. Without God, we have no help. Without Christ dying on the cross, we have no redemption. But because God sent His own Son to the world to be a sacrifice for you and I, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 21 and 22, if any man have committed sin worthy of death, let he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree. Galatians 3 and 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made the curse for us, for it is written, Curse everyone that hangeth on the tree. Look at Corinthians 5 and 21. You know this. This is my power verse. For God, He hath made Him to become sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be the righteousness of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. We don't give the gospel power. Preachers don't give the gospel power. The gospel has an innate power all to its own. It's the only thing that can change lives. Amen. Uh, your Bible tells you, and you've been studying, and you've been reading about this. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse 18, For the preaching of the cross uh, is to them that perish uh, foolishness, but unto us uh, which are saved, uh, it is the power uh, of God. Well, i like to read the rest of that, but I ain't got time. But it goes on to say, God uses foolishness to confound the wise. It's not in the wisdom of men. Salvation is not a toy. 
Salvation is not a talking point. Salvation is not a, a suggestion in the, the scriptures that we read to you. In verse number 16, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto everyone that believeth, uh, uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, salvation is only powerful uh, if you believe in it. Amen. Uh, it's those that walk by faith uh, uh, unto God. Uh, hey, listen, uh, let me give you verse 17 while I'm standing here on this. Uh, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Ah! Who hath believed I report, and to whom are here's how right is revealed from faith to faith. What does that mean? I'm glad you ask. I was worried I wouldn't get the answer to this question. From faith to faith, since Adam's so inquisitive and wants to know, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Faith to faith. Faithful God. Faithful God. Nights. Faith in God until you about God. Learned about God's faithful arm. Salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. First the Jew, then the Greek. And for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faithful God revealing His to your faith. The just shall live by faith. Say this, the gospel is sustainability. You can't sustain faith if you open A new idea will come along. A new theology will come along. Something will change your mind about what you believe. It will come along. Let me show you something very quickly. The Bible tells us, First Timothy, Second Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 8, Paul's writing to Timothy that there need, he needs to be sustainable. The Bible says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker in afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Why is Paul writing to Timothy about the sustainability of the power of God and the afflictions of the gospel? Because he knows chapter 3 is coming. He knows Timothy's day is coming. Uh, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. There'll be truth breakers. He's getting Timothy ready. Something got to sustain you, Timothy. He's getting Timothy ready. Something's coming. It's got to sustain you. Now let me tell you something about our election. All of you, I love you all, and I don't know how you voted, and I don't want to know how you voted. But if somehow or another, you think your vote scared back evil, there should be another question that you ought to be asking. Why is evil so prevalent? Why would it rise up in such a time as this, in such power and such force? Let me help you with something. There's been a spirit in this world that's been familiar with this world since the days of that man and woman in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number, I think it's about 17, that they saw they were both naked and they were unashamed. That spirit has been Moloch, the killer of babies. That spirit has been Ashtaroth, 
both male and female. That spirit has been bailed. The owner, whoa, the God of fertility, indiscretion. Let me tell you something. You should ask yourself, why are these spirits so prevalent now? You think that you handled it with your vote. I love you for voting, however you voted. I love you. You think you handled it. I've, we've swore it now. We've put her down now. No, you ain't. Your votes are physical. For our warfare is not carnal, but spiritual. Oh, we got to get past the carnal and get into the spiritual and mighty through God. Pulling down the strongholds. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, there's come a time uh, in our lives that we see now uh, on a daily basis uh, uh, that we got to have help uh, and we can't rely on our neighbors uh, and we can't rely on ourselves. Uh, uh, We're going to have to get a hold of somebody uh, uh, that's got the ability uh, to do something for everybody. That's all and blood. Y'all think y'all beat down Kamala Harris in the Democratic court. Some of y'all crying because you got beat down. I'm not wrestling with that. Mm, oh, I got to look past that. I can't put your face on my anguish. I can't put your face on my hurt. I can't put your face on my discontent. You know why? Because I wrestle with powers and principalities uh, and rulers of darkness of this world. Uh, I've got to put on the whole armor of God and get past the faces, uh, get past the names uh, and understand one thing. I am not ashamed uh, of the gospel uh, or the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not ashamed that He had to come and die. Just a fact, just a fact that God had to send His Son to this world is an indictment on mankind. Woo! Because he had to come is an indictment. Because God had to leave the throne and come and don't flesh and walk in the mud is an indictment. I'm not ashamed of his. He said, as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, if I be lifted up, oh, I'll draw all men unto me. Hey, hey, a thief cometh, uh, but to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but I am come uh, that you may have life uh, and that you might have it uh, more abundantly. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. What a testimony. What a testimony. No greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Are my friends I come? Paul said, to be intimidated. Don't you be ashamed of his testimony. Don't you be ashamed of me, his prisoner. Just go ahead and get a hold of the afflictions of the gospel of the power of God. Because he says on down verse 12, For the which cause I have suffered these things. He said, I've suffered it. Because of the gospel, Timothy. I've suffered it because of the gospel. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know in whom I believe. And I am persuaded. He's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Now then, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel that sustains me. I don't know how many times I... Had to get in the Bible just to find my way out to the house. Amen. You ever been that way? 
Y'all ain't been that way. Y'all holy. I've been that way. I've been so lost. I've been as lost as a ball in tall grass, not knowing which way I'm going to go. But when I open that book and it starts telling me about Jesus and it starts telling me about his love for those that love him and when it starts telling me about the promises that he gives and that he keeps and the healing that he has, I can't help but know he's carried me all this way. All my life he has been faithful. All my life he has been so, so good. But he tells Timothy, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord of me as prisoner. Be thou a partaker of afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. There's something that we don't like to talk about. Or not be ashamed. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, Paul said, oh, I'm glad God showed up this morning. How about y'all being here? And him just talking. Paul said, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should not be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Paul says, For my strength made perfect. It comes so God's only God when you can't do it. God's more manifest. Give her testimony. Doctors, I heart care. Couldn't do nothing with that. Most gladly, therefore, Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproach, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Get past that. Skip over that sometimes. Oh Lord, touch me, touch me. Oh Lord, help me, help me. Oh Lord, they're persecuting me. Oh God, I'm ashamed to stand up and say anything because I know what their response is going to be. Child of God. You're either God's or you're not. God don't share favors. And Peter says, Think it not strange, fiery trials come to try you. What are you talking about? Dad, right, Meshach, and Abednego? Could be. Don't know. But he goes on down through there and he has a word. And in verse 16 he says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, be not ashamed. Let him glorify God on this back. Say, Y'all ever hear Job? Y'all ever heard of him? You hear all his, why, 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 Lord, he fall on me? Why, Lord, does this happen? Why, Lord, no. That could get my end of this. Ali. Lord, give. Lord hath away. Blessed be the name. Gave God glory in his afflictions. We, oh, listen, are you? Look here. You sit like a knot on a log when the Spirit's moving and 
people's worshiping and God's telling you, you know, y'all to really say something about me. You sit there and you say, got this. Not what it said. Don't we miss? Don't we? Because why? Because your afflictions are personal. Your afflictions happen to you and nobody else. But what you don't understand is the same afflictions happening to you happen all around you. How you react to it is how God gets glory. This is where the power comes. How you react to it. Sustainability. Suffering. It's the salvation. Children. Child of God. I am not ashamed. Gospel. I am not ashamed of the testimony of Christ. I am not ashamed. I, my, my, one of my pastors, I, I've had two that I count as pastors in my life. R.J. Reynolds was a God or none. I'm going to say something again. Take it up outside. I seen that man work. I seen God work through him. The other one was Preacher, Preacher Stockton, man of God as well. Love him dearly. Y'all saw us. We carried him up on the stage when he couldn't walk, but he still had a desire to preach. His wife took ill. I don't remember. What was her diagnosis? A mess crippled her. And when the news came, I'm going to be the young preacher that just does everything right. I'm going, I'm going to go up to Sister Shirley. I'm going to grab her by the hand. I'm going to tell her I'm praying. I'm so sorry this came your way. Oh, what that blessed woman. Shot me down like I was a B-52. She was an anti-aircraft. I said, Sister Shirley, I am so, so I even rehearsed it. Preachers do something. I, I thought, I'll tell her this. I'll tell, let me, let me get a hold of her. And what, God, you'll have to do a little bit, but I got the rest. I had my speech. Yeah. Scott, I went to her and I grabbed her by the arm and I Sister Shirley, I am so. Hey, this has happened to you. I'm going to be praying. She said, I didn't get to finish. I was just there in the introduction. He said, stop right there. I was, had on the hold of her hand. I was ashamed that I still had it. But I said, will you do me a favor? Pray for me. I'm not My time. Not ready to turn around and walk off. All her bad names. That trifling. Back of my. Did that every time. She'd catch you turn around, she'd take him fingers. Clapow. Oh, man. I'd jerk and jump and holler. Threw me a couple. She did that. She went, Pow. Turn around, looked at her, and she said, World wants you fearful, frustrated. They want you to, to think that you're going to be ridiculed, and you probably are. And God said, Good that you are. They're going to make you feel inferior. Good 
that they do make you feel inadequate or even after what God's done to his children. Those that Whosoever believes. Just want. you think about some things. There's been a time where you felt like maybe, maybe it could be humiliating for me to step out and say something. Shame. There's ever been a time where you think, I feel inferior talking about the Lord. Shame. Paul said, I'm ready to preach. I am. Shame comes when we don't know what we're talking about. Are you with me? When we start talking about something and it's really not our ball game, this should be our wheel. Shame. I've got the book. I don't know it. You give me five minutes, I'll look it up. This should be our go I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I get tickled at folks. I got two t-shirts. One of them I bought the other day, that leap of faith, it says, real men pray. On the back of it, it goes into a big, long spill about real men bow their knees, humble their heart, and pray. The other one came to me by my militant daughter-in-law. It's got a big rainbow on it. It says, we're taking back the rainbow. I get compliments on them shirts. But it's not like you think. They come up to you and they say, I like that shirt. They turn and leave. I'm wearing it. Why don't you talk to me? They come up and whisper, I agree with that shirt. Wonder what are they ashamed of? Shame. I'm ashamed of the way the church is going to not this church, but church life. I'm ashamed that they've replaced salvation with good services. I really wanted to preach a few minutes this just morning. I said, God, get in there, let me get charged up. Let me tell them about heaven. Let me give them their home somewhere beyond the blue. We're almost there. Let me, I can see the lights. Lord, let me give them something good. God said, you know, just a few minutes. I just my house until I. And the presence of the Lord started in the choir this morning. I said, God, you're here. I feel good. I'm still going to preach that old mean message. Not rent. But life has a way of making. Life has a way of putting us in a box. Did you notice during the last election? Here's the thing. I got to go. Y'all just been too good, and God's still with me. So I'm just gonna hang around for a minute. During the last election, both sides blamed you. The Democrats called us the.